Welcome to We Are Libertarians. I am Chris Spangle. I'm the host. And joining me on the line is Kara Schultz, the candidate recruitment specialist for the Libertarian Party. Kara, how are you doing tonight? Very good. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, it's very exciting to talk to you. I, I My personal philosophy is that the job of a national and a state and a local party is to recruit, recruit, recruit both leaders and candidates. So it's nice to see the National Libertarian Party uh, take that step. And I will say under Nick Sarwark, the national office has been making many great strides. Uh, and yeah, you're, I yeah, you're, I bet. <laughs> and under your addition, this is an exciting step. So can you explain to people what a candidate recruitment specialist is? Sure. So a candidate recruitment specialist, what I do is I, uh, talk with libertarians who are interested in running for, for your office, uh, kind of assess their needs and where they're at, and then try to connect them to resources and also connect them with their state party if they have not already done that, so that they can get assistance at the local level as well. Uh, just try to make the whole process as smooth as possible for them to get on the ballot and get their campaign started and underway. And then I also help states. Um, so the state uh, chapters, you know, I work with either their chair or their their candidate recruitment person or their political director and see what they need to be able to recruit more candidates and be able to support more candidates as well. So kind of I have uh, two missions going on at the same time. Cool. We'll, we'll dive into those a little bit, but I want to I want to learn a little bit about you first. Where uh, what is your libertarian story? Where did you come from? I came from the Gary Johnson campaign. So in uh, the 2012 campaign, um, and you know, and I was a Ron Pauler before then, but I was a Ron Pauler, mm -hmm. which is different at times from being involved with the Libertarian Party itself. Sure. Um, but I joined the Libertarian Party through working on the Gary Johnson campaign. I heard him on the radio, thought he was the only person I was definitely going to vote for. And so I volunteered to help on his campaign. Um, and his campaign needed a little, little more assistance in Minnesota. And I uh, then I was called and they said, oh, by the way, you're you're now directing the campaign in Minnesota. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, really? Well, OK, then. Um, and, you know, we pulled it together and frankly, we kicked ass and we did really well in Minnesota. And I joined with the Libertarian Party itself at that point, And I've been going full bore with the party ever since. So how did you end up getting the job at the National Party? Nepotism. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're Nick's cousin, no. aren't you? Right, exactly. <laughs> no, uh, I, you know, I, I saw that they were looking for a candidate specialist. So, you know, they weren't specifying. At that point, they had the position that you were recruiting candidates and then also assisting them through their campaign itself, you know start to finish. And, you know, I thought, geez, that is as close to a dream job description as I've ever seen. <laughs> you know, that's, that's exactly what I want to do and what I've been trying to do, you know, get more libertarians to run for office and help them during their campaign. So to be able to do this on a national level is, is amazing. And when they interviewed me for the position, I told them, whether I get this position or you give it to another candidate, I am just so excited. I can't hardly stand it. I'm so happy that the party is ready to take this step. Um, and they did split the position into two, which I think was very smart of them. So I handle the recruitment and getting them onto the ballot and getting them started. And then we will have a candidate campaign specialist that will select um, certain campaigns that we think we can be really competitive in, or that will be especially prominent. And they will assist them to make sure that they run the best campaign possible. 
That's really smart. That's really uh, great to hear because I'm of the mindset that the Libertarian Party, as good as ballot access is, and I don't disagree that the National Party's job is to get ballot access, the candidate side of things for the National Libertarian Party, and I've been around for 10 years, has really been anemic at the national level. And we're fortunate here in Indiana to have a very uh, robust party that has a lot of institutional knowledge, people who have been involved for 40 years. Uh, yeah. So, and not every state has that. You do have a lot of turnover at some of these new states. So oh, when, yeah. when you're talking to some of these state parties, I mean, what are they, what are they asking for? What are you finding as you talk to state libertarian parties? You know, it's really running the gamut. Uh, we do have some states where their leadership is extremely new and uh, they, they don't have a lot of base to draw on both in knowledge. Um, you know, they've had a big turnover. Or, you know, they're kind of reinventing themselves um, or they're an emerging state and they need help from square one. How do I recruit candidates? What should I be asking them? Um, once someone says they want to be a candidate, what do I do next? So, so I am assisting some states at that level. And then there's other states where they have everything going full bore. They're doing really excellent. So the types of things they're asking me for are a little higher level. They're getting into um, discussions of when we're sending emails to prospective candidates, how do I increase the open and red rate? How do I increase the response rate? How often should I contact them? You know, so we're getting into like smaller, minute things with them just to increase their effectiveness. Sure. Um, but one project that I'm working on that I'm, I'm, and when you're talking about institutional knowledge and being able to pass that on, that is something I'm working really, really hard on. I want to make sure that if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, someone can step into my job and they will have the entire base of knowledge to keep building on. So there's, there's two areas that we're fleshing out right now. Um, number one, um, I just finished the candidate workbook. So the candidate workbook will take people through from A to Z on how to do a campaign. And it's in workbook format, so they go through it and you fill in the blanks. And it tells you exactly what to look for, what to do, step by step. It's still fairly basic. I think it's around, well, minus the appendix about 50 pages, 50, 60 pages right in there. So it's still pretty basic, but it's focused on the unique challenges that libertarian candidates have. Right. And we'll be fleshing that out as we get feedback from our candidates and our campaign managers. And as other libertarians become aware of this workbook and say, you know, I have a really great section on fundraising. Can I send you that so you can put it in the workbook so that we can have all of this together and it lives on and keeps getting built upon. And we're not having candidates reinvent the wheel, every candidate, every state. If um, the other thing that we're working on is uh, we're working on a CRM program that states can use. This way, we don't have data in 50 different places. Um, we aren't, please, please, hopefully soon, not trading Excel spreadsheets. Before. <laughs> That's what they said in 1989. <laughs> but I, oh, it's so it's so right on. Yeah. We start testing on Wednesday. Wednesday. Great. So we start testing this on Wednesday with, I believe, five states. So this information we will have, um, it will be a CRM program that actually works within their website, works with national and it will work really well for candidate recruitment as well, because as people are interested, um, we can follow their progress right along and people don't get you know, lost in the shuffle. There's always someone paying attention to where they are in the process and the help they need, whether that's myself stepping into a system, whether that's the campaign specialist, someone else at national, their regional rep, or whether that is um, their state political director. Okay, so let me, I, I solicited some questions for you from our Facebook page. Um, 
Some I of, like red wine. Yeah, some of them are very thoughtful. Other of other of them, uh, can we get rid of pesky roads? Uh, why are you a statist? Uh, just tell her she's not a real libertarian. See how she reacts. So some of those questions, but some of these are thoughtful. Let's start with Dan Montgomery. He asks, "Can you give me one reason why I should run as a libertarian candidate?" I can actually give several reasons why someone should run as a libertarian candidate. First of all, it's a message that needs to get out there, that there are alternatives that people can look at, a different way of thinking about things. And this way of thinking, you know, what we talk about as libertarian philosophy is a very engaged, caring, peaceful philosophy. And that's something that people are crying out for. Um, they're a little resistant at first because it is different, but we need to get that message out there. So if you run, if for no other reason than other people hear your message and they start thinking differently about things, they start along that path of non-aggression. They start along that path of, you know, interacting with each other for solutions rather than just hoping, you know, daddy government takes care of it and they don't have to. So that's one reason. But the other reason is you might win. I won my election. I am an elected official as a libertarian. It took me two runs, but I got it done. What and I am making lasting changes in my community and I have completely changed the dynamic on the city council that I serve on. That's cool. What office did you win? I am... Um, City Council for Burnsville, Minnesota. We're about 60,000 people and we're in the Twin Cities area. So not a small town. How did you how did you get elected? Explain to the people how you won your election. I knocked every door. Every door. I knocked 22,000 doors. That's how I won my election. The other way that I won my election is I listened to people instead of telling them and I was able to give them what libertarian philosophy was in a way that they could easily understand it. And I didn't argue with people. Um, I wasn't trying to, you know, win a debate. Uh, what I did was find out what they cared about and worked with that. But really, it was knocking 22,000 doors. Imagine that, listeners. Interpersonal, interpersonal communication skills and hard work. It's almost like she's been listening to the show. Uh, right? It's really all it takes is, is just some hard work and treat people with kindness and respect and you'll win. So, um, yeah. what Matthew Healy writes, what prior experience and credentials are possessed by the most successful candidates? You know, you don't have to possess credentials to be a successful candidate. You hit on what you need to be a successful candidate. You need to be willing to go all in on it. You have to put everything you have into it. You have to be willing that even when you are feeling crappy and it's raining and it's, you know, 40 degrees out, you're still gonna knock on doors for eight hours. And the next day on a, on a weekend night, you worked all day, you're gonna do it for four hours. And then you're gonna write thank you notes for two hours when you get home. And then you're gonna prep your, your sheets for an hour after that. That's what you're gonna do. You have to have good interpersonal skills and you have to care about people. And you can't, well, you can fake it, but not many people can fake it. Clinton could fake it. He was good at that. That's right. a skill. Most of us can't do that. And other people know if you care or you don't care, they can tell. But the other thing is, you got to fundraise. You got to have money. Now, I am not a wealthy person. It's not like I could just sell funds. You got to fundraise. All right. So Kyle O'Neill asks, what is the LP doing to specifically combat the notion that voting anything other than Dem or Republican 
for a larger election is a lost cause and a wasted vote. Now, I know that this is not your specific scope, uh, but I'm sure as you were talking to people, as you were recruiting candidates, the wasted vote syndrome, I'm sure, is something that you run into. So how do you how do you answer that question? If I run, am I wasting my time because I'm going to lose anyways? Well, first of all, if you run, you haven't wasted your time unless you decided to do nothing. Then you might have wasted your time. But as to the question, um, the you know the wasted vote syndrome, that is starting to change, and I think we're going to see that change more and more on the larger tickets. But first, we have to have candidates willing to consistently get on the ballot. What needs to happen is is a couple things. First of all, voters need to regularly see a libertarian line on the ballot. When things are printed in an official form, suddenly they're real and they're valid. That's just how people work. The other thing that we need to do is we need to run serious campaigns and we need to get included in debates, televised debates, um, you know, whether that's, you know, all the way up to, you know, U.S. Senate, you need to be included in those debates. And we need to raise hell until we get our candidates included in those debates. If you're not running a serious campaign, don't expect them to include you in the debate. If you're running a serious campaign, you're still going to have to fight very hard to get included. When those two things start happening with more regularity, that will break the, I have to vote for this or this. Now, uh, <laughs> I think Paul is alluding to a certain Senate race currently, but uh, Paul Robbins Jr. asks, what sort of vetting process do we have for candidates, specifically to look at any potential criminal history that ultimately may damage the campaign and the party? That depends on the state. For some states, the party has has absolutely nothing they can do if if a candidate gets on the ballot and puts libertarian or whatever next to their name. There is nothing. There's nothing you can do. We have no legal recourse whatsoever. We can't screen them. We can't do anything about them. If they fulfill the requirements of their state, they're on. Other states, they have to be signed off on by the state party. And unless the state party, you know, signs off on them, then they're not allowed. State chapters work independently. So there may be a case where a state signs off on a candidate, perhaps national wouldn't, or vice versa. That could happen as well. Those are things that we're going to have to face on a case by case basis. Yeah, the the Indiana State Party. Um, so my goal in 2010, when I was the executive director of the state party, full time executive director, and my job was to recruit candidates, and we had a goal of two uh, of uh, 100 people on the ballot, and we we met that goal. Uh, I think only Texas surpassed us that year. They were very strong that year, um, but we got darn close uh, considering they're so much bigger. And right. we ran a lot of great candidates, and we had a lot of not great candidates. And we had one instance where the local alternative news magazine called Nuvo, our alternative weekly, put out a voter's guide. And I, maybe a quarter of our candidates actually filled the thing out, and one mm -hmm. of them had a headshot. And, like, this is a oh. core you, – you know, in an alternative weekly, that's a core audience. And so – they yes. they just embarrassed us and instead of putting because none of them had headshots they just put yep. jc penny models so we had so right. i went to the central committee that that next year and i said you know running a bunch of candidates isn't a, always a great strategy because we're getting mocked by by outlets that should you know and and voters that should be natural allies of ours so in 2012 we put together a candidate vetting form and asked everybody to fill out this form. It was very basic information, just like a job application, some very simple answers about basic philosophy. 
And uh, then I made those documents available to everyone at the state convention so they could read those. And mm -hmm. we, we implemented one key thing, which was the, the candidate had to have two party officers, either county chair or state party officer, like a state central committee member or the chair, sign their, their document. And uh, that way, at least two people in the room knew and had had a conversation with that person. Because so often in the Libertarian Party, uh, the sad reality is somebody shows up to the state convention, they go, you're up, go ahead. And that happened. They didn't use the vetting form in 2016, and we had a guy who tried fusion. He was using us and the Republicans to sue the Supreme Court of Indiana for fusion voting, which is you can run <laughs> on two parties. We don't have that here, and we don't want to be a part of that. So right. in 2018 and beyond, the state central committee has actually adopted that as an official policy moving forward, which is great. And that's one way that it, it, she's – Kara's right. It's really up to the local party to vet candidates because it's extremely expensive to do a lot of background checks. The, the Republicans and Democrats a lot of times don't do background checks. It's based on who, who works their way up. So it, it, for those state parties and local parties out there, I would recommend contacting the LPIN – or going to their website for that candidate vetting form and then instituting that in your local area because it is, it's important to know who's running. And those documents, there were some people that just, they they turned in some crazy socialist stuff and I just seemed to lose their paperwork, uh, <laughs> you know, but then the, uh, everybody else at the convention uh, got a chance to read all of what they thought. Mm -hmm. You know, I was more organized as a state office because I had everybody's information. We we made headshots a mandatory thing and a website. We hooked them up with a website and headshot day. So these are just some of the basic things. And that's, I mean, are there requirements? Are you, how are you handling requirements? Because as the national party, it's not really your job to dictate to local parties what they can or can't do. But what are some of the requirements or recommendations that you make for first time candidates? You know, Mainly, I want to know if someone is a first time candidate, you know, if they've never run as a candidate at all. And also, um, they, or, you know, they've never run as a libertarian before. Uh, and then that's information that I note because um, as we get people who express interest or I talk to them and they express interest, I do get a little bit of information from them. But really, I try to connect them to their state party as soon as possible. And then I do note, you know, this is the new candidate. You know, they've not run before. Um, and then that should be the state party's cue to take a closer look and also know that this person is probably going to need a little more assistance. I know that libertarians get a little touchy when a candidate runs that they, you know, may have an issue with their past or they have problematic stances on certain issues. And they say, oh, geez, you know, we just don't have our crap together. Look at the headlines any given day for Republicans and Democrats. Judge Moore, I'm looking at you. They have their issues too. This is not unique to our party. It's it's not anything different. And they have far more infrastructure, money, time, everything in place, and they're not able to do it. So just have the understanding that we're all humans. <laughs> Things like this are going to happen. But yeah. do your best to put processes in place to do the best job that you can. You want great quality candidates, and you want to be able to support those candidates. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some of the questions that are asked by first-time candidates? You know, first-time candidates, they have a ton of questions. You know, they want to know, how do I file? Um, what do I need to do to get on the ballot? Um, should I be throwing up my website right now? Who do I talk to? You know, they want to know absolutely everything because many of them just have this idea. They want to run. They haven't investigated it very much. They kind of have an idea. And many of them aren't sure which office they're going to run for. They have an idea but they're also open to other suggestions. And this is also where state parties can help guide these first-time candidates. 
sometimes after talking with a candidate and you find out the issues that they're passionate about, you realize that the race that they're planning to run is at the wrong level because the issues that they are interested in aren't impacted at that level. You know, whether they're looking at running as a, you know, a statewide candidate or federal level or local level, you need to help guide your candidates into the proper level office that would work for them. So that's a way that they can really assist their first time candidates. But they're looking for everything from how do I fundraise? Um, how the heck am I gonna win this, this election? There's you know um, 40,000 people in my town. I, I can't talk to every single person. How do I get this down to a manageable number? And so, you know, you start to have the conversations with them about, you know, targeting likely voters, things like that. So they have every question, every question. <laughs> but <laughs> it, it, it is, it's so funny when you're a first time candidate. I mean, I probably dealt with a couple hundred those four years. Like, I, I noticed two things about first time candidates, and they're just really kind of, to me, insecurities that. Uh, are easily overcome once you just start the process. First, mm -hmm. they didn't want to embarrass libertarianism. They didn't feel like they knew enough about the philosophy, and they didn't want to make other the uh, other people look bad uh, that they you know that they're you know in the foxhole with. Secondly, they didn't feel like they had enough knowledge on how to run a campaign. And uh, there's a lot of great material out there on how to run for office, both within the Libertarian Party when, without now, especially in the Internet age. Uh, yeah. You know, and it's great to have just, I don't know, a Sherpa like yourself to kind of help those people. And I would just say if you're thinking about running for office, uh, you're, you're not going to regret it but you're going to regret it. <laughs> you're going to have days where you just go, I don't know why I did this, but every fall when that weather changes, you're gonna go, oh, I wish I were knocking on doors again because it is a ton of fun. I mean, it is. would you, I mean, would you disagree? I mean, it, it is one running for office. What were, what was your experience running for office like? So much hard work, but so great. You meet, so many incredible people, and I, and I have made lasting friendships through my runs for office. And, you know, when I was out door knocking, and, and many people are a little concerned about door knocking, you know, what's the reception going to be, you know, are people going to be mean to them? No, for the most part, people are exceptionally kind. I mean, here you are, you've just randomly shown up on their doorstep, they're probably eating dinner. Um, you're, I mean, like, they didn't wake up that morning going, gee, you know what I wish would happen to me today? I wish a candidate would knock on my door. Right. That didn't happen. Um, and yet, when you knock on their door, most of them are very polite. Um, they do want you to get to the point. So I'll give you that hint. Um, but they're really interested and willing to take some time with you because they do, they do want to do a good job at the polls. You know, so the fact that you showed up means a lot to them because most most candidates will not. They will not knock on their door. Um, and they want to find out more about you. But even more than your positions, they're judging you as a person. Um, but it was very, it was very interesting. You know, you hear some really amazing stories. I met people who had bought their home, well, they had had it built, and here we are in a major metropolitan area in their life, and they were telling me about when they built their home and it was a gravel road and what that was like and the changes that have happened to the to the city. So hearing stories like that is pretty amazing. So the other thing that I found is that some some people, they want to start big. <laughs> yeah, they do. And uh, I mean, w w if somebody wants to run for office, but they're not sure where, or even if they're thinking about starting big, I mean, where do, where do you try to push people? You know, I really try to um, gauge where their interests lie and then have them go in that direction and also understand what their uh, what their frustration level is 
And by that, I mean, if they shoot for the moon and they run for governor, if they aren't elected, are they going to rage quit <laughs> everything? <laughs> you know, because if, if that's the case, we don't want to burn someone out. We don't want to burn someone that has a lot of energy and enthusiasm. You know, you, you don't want to burn them out on something like that. Um, so, you know, you try to assess that as well. Um, but really it's, you know, it's, it's just trying to help them find their spot. That's really what you're trying to do Sure. and make that work for them. Yeah. I've always recommended run for a local race, but there are some people, they just, they couldn't be, they couldn't be less interested in local politics and they want to run for national right. office. Yeah. And they're, yeah, they just, they have no interest in the, and that's fine. Yeah. You know, and other people, after you talk to them, you know, and also once you explain the extreme level of power that local offices hold over everyone's daily life, they get very interested in running for local office. And I do suggest to states as well as candidates, take a look at your local offices, not just mayor or city council. There are other positions like water commissioner, there is land and soil, you know, there are positions like that, that oftentimes there is no challenger for. And sometimes there's no one on the ballot at all for that, for that office. And if a libertarian was on the line, you win by default. So take a look at those types of offices and realize that those offices, especially those hidden ones, have an immense amount of power, immense. Yeah, I think it's a great idea for every Libertarian Party person, uh, or even, I mean, if you're a Republican Party person or a Democratic Party person or an independent-minded person listening to this, if you're a citizen, go to your county clerk's office and mm -hmm. ask ask for what, what will be up for election in the next cycle or the next two cycles if they have it prepared. Get to know your county clerk. County clerks usually are completely mystified on Libertarian Party uh, election <laughs> law, uh, which is why yes. you need your state party to be really good friends with your Indiana State Election Division, because when the clerks don't do the things the right way, then you need the election division to call and police them a little bit. Um, yep. But yeah, find out what offices are available. So when somebody contacts you and says, I want to run for an office, well, here's the list of offices that are up. And that's something that Indiana's mm -hmm. always posted is here are the, you know, we know we have township trustee board positions up this year, and this right. is the most local office you can run for. And if you you only have to knock on 1,500 doors, and you can do that in the summer. Like, so th that's one thing that I think that local people can do, both parties, county chairs, just regular people. You may be a libertarian out there not realizing that there's going to be an office that will go unfilled, and a party will, f the Democrats or Republicans will fill it, and you could have been elected to it had you done a little due diligence this December or January. So I think that's yeah. a great point is go check out what is available and and see if you can't get yourself elected. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, and go ahead. You can do yeah. it through hard work. Those ones you can absolutely do through hard work. Yeah, when you've got 1,500 doors, you can knock those three times. Absolutely. And you're talking about raising two or three hundred bucks for the printed yep. flyers. I mean, we're not talking about uh, rocket surgery here. Uh, no. <laughs> Mike Tron. No, absolutely. So there's two types of sales. There's the inbound sales, somebody sitting on a phone answering uh, the inbound. And then there's the outbound sales person that goes out and drives around and tries to get new business. And that's kind of what Mike is asking. Uh, do you often look outside the party for candidates? Or are you strictly recruiting from within? And I know you've got a goal of 2,000 candidates this year. So how... How are you going to find those 2,000 candidates? Uh, yes. So, yep, I am answering inbound calls. <laughs> so that is definitely one thing I'm doing. Um, yeah, so we are looking primarily within the party, you know, whether they are a national party member or they are a state party member. But we're also looking at people who just simply don't know they're libertarians yet. They are. They just haven't quite realized it yet but they're on that path towards liberty 
And so we're, you know, we're talking to them and assisting them along the way. Um, and it may be, and for some of them, um, they have talked to either Republicans or the Democrats about running for office, and those parties rejected them because of their stances on certain issues. And that's when they realized, well, dang, I always thought I was a Republican or a Democrat, but I'm not. So what the heck am I? And that's when they're realizing that, no, they really are a libertarian. And then they're starting to you know, either contact us or we're hearing about them and we're contacting them. Well, speaking of which, how do people contact you if they want to run for office? They can uh, email me, which is my name, Kara, C-A-R-A dot Schultz, S-C-H-U-L-Z, at LNC dot org. That is the probably the best way to get a hold of me. Or you can always hit me up on Facebook. I'm always on Facebook. I try to keep it up all the time. I get a lot of messages through there. You need to get you need to get like a cam candidates at LP because <laughs> there's so many mis, different misspellings. That's C A R A dot S C H U L Z. Yeah, and if they hit the candidates at lnc dot org, they're gonna get me too. Awesome. There we go. Yeah. So. Yeah, be sure to get in touch with Kara. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you finish with uh, your elevator pitch. Give us your best pitch on why somebody should run as a Libertarian Party candidate. People should run as a Libertarian candidate because they can get that message of liberty out there to people. They can get it out there to a wider number of people than they can do just ranting on Facebook or posting tweets on Twitter. And they can do it in a way that affects policy. Whether they're elected or not, their conversation will affect policy in their area. And you never know, you could get elected. Yeah, it's not impossible. And like you said, you you try, you had to run twice. And uh, mm -hmm. I think I, I met with a candidate recently and I said, you know, you should really plan on running two or three times for this office. Yeah. And it's totally possible to win, but it may take you two or three cycles and you have to be engaged in your community and then you can win. It's not impossible. Absolutely. Most candidates do not win their first election. And I don't care if you're a libertarian, a Republican, a Democrat, it doesn't matter. Most of them do not win the first time they run for office. That's just how it is. All right. Thank you so much for joining me, Kara. Again, candidates at lnc.org. You bet. All right. Hit her up. Thanks so much for watching here on We Are Libertarians. Uh, you can find more about us at wearelibertarians.com, and we will talk to you soon.